Um, so thank you, Adam. So I'm Rebecca. I'm one of the oncology, clinical oncology registrars in Oxford. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about training in clinical oncology. Um, so why clinical oncology? That's always almost the dreaded question at an interview, isn't it? Why do you want to do oncology? Why do you want to do medicine? Um, not wanting to get yourself tied in not sounding insincere by I'm good at science and I like to help people. Um, but you really can do that in oncology. Um, Regular patient contact, as Adam said, results in a really strong doctor-patient relationship, which is strengthened by the fact that we really have to have shared decision-making um, in this situation. Um, we have some really strong evidence-based guidelines, but no two cancer patients present in the same way, and the guidelines don't fit all. So you do have to really consider your patient's wishes as well as your own when you're making a management plan, and that results in a really strong long-term relationship that you're able to build with patients as they move through their illness and hopefully their recovery as well. So alongside the challenge of meeting patients at what is often the worst time in their and their families' lives, we've got um, to manage a constantly evolving specialty. We've got an increasing ability to tailor treatment to an individual patient's tumour, We've got technological advances in the treatment and planning of radiotherapy so that we can isolate tumours and um, increasingly treat them more accurately and spare normal tissue. Um, and we've got some really new targeted treatments, which, as Adam says, you often read about in the papers, um, to be able to treat cancer without causing patients so many side effects. Um, and by the nature of the spectrum of the activity that we give as clinical oncologists, we provide a really unique holistic view of cancer care. Clinical oncology is a balance, and there is no such thing as a typical week, but we balance between treating acute and chronic illness, there's a balance between inpatient and outpatient work, a balance between clinic and academic challenges, um, and a work-life balance. I see patients in a range of settings, including in an outpatient clinic, on a chemotherapy suite, on a ward, the clinics, uh, the radiotherapy department, um, and so really it's, it's very varied and it keeps it interesting. In the same working week, I've got dedicated time to radiotherapy outlining, um, which is a really nice time to reflect on your busy week away from direct patient contact and concentrate on a very different skill of radiotherapy. The technical challenges of the training, I think, sets the specialty apart and gives an opportunity to work with a really talented group of professionals um, in therapy radiographers and physicists who you don't often come into contact with in any other specialty. I've had a, pe a period of maternity leave, I've returned to work less than full time and the department has been wholly supportive of that decision and it is a really busy job but I haven't had to compromise my family life and Julie which I think leads you to a more productive and happier working life. So clinical oncology trainees, as medical oncology trainees we complete foundation and then two years of core medical training which as Adam says with the shape of training review may alter but you then enter clinical oncology. The first three years of your training, you cover all tumour sites and you includes a course um, in the science that underpins our specialty. That's uh, when you do your first FRCR examination and then once you've done that you can enter into ST5. The final two years, training is focused on consolidating your understanding of cancer treatments and developing skills in technical radiotherapy, management and leadership. There's few other specialties where you accrue so much brand new knowledge in ST3 and it can seem very daunting. My sort of real science base came from GCSEs. So I'd done GCSE maths, GCSE physics, uh, and then did radiotherapy. And it's, it seems daunting, but you are incredibly supported in your learning of that. Um, radiobiology, physics, statistics, chemotherapy were all very new to me, um, but there are so much time is given to help you learn that knowledge. Um, I personally, in Oxford, we get sent to a course one day a week at the Institute of Cancer Research, which not only is a lovely break from clinical work um, and an ability to meet your colleagues from around the south of England, but it's also some dedicated time to learn those really complex new sciences. So don't let that put you off. Uh, there are more exams in clinical oncology than there are in other specialties, including medical oncology, um, but it does reflect the breadth and the depth of our training. Um, courses and periods of study have been easy to access for both exams for me, so please don't look at that and run away. 
So where now? I'm hoping that we've uh, inspired you and we'll continue to inspire you with the rest of the talks about wanting to be an oncologist. Clinical oncology is a very growing, richly rewarding area of medicine and it can provide you with a very exciting, diverse and rewarding career path which challenges you both in your clinical and communication skills um, and allows you to pursue a lot of learning. I'm thinking probably you're all at foundational core training so it's, it's important to get that good grounding in general medicine and surgery. Take or create any opportunity for oncology related audits or research and try and foster links with your local oncology departments and try and at least get into a radiotherapy uh, department. There are taster weeks or taster evenings and there are great resources on the RCR website and also the NHS Health Careers website. So I think that's the end of my time so I'll pass on uh, to uh, Sarah.